Welcome to the channel and welcome to another review video. My name is Kai Song and today we're specifically looking at these two mini beasts, the Canon M50 and the Canon G7X Mark II. Which one is better at vlogging and which one should you consider getting? That's what we're hoping to answer today, so let's jump into it. So the G7X Mark II was released way back in February of 2014 and this particular camera has been with me all over the world. The Canon M50 is much newer and was launched four years after the G7X Mark II in March of 2018. Now I've been using my Canon M50 now for a few months and it has a stack of very impressive features. So to compare these two cameras, let's first talk about sensor size. Now the G7X Mark II has a 20 megapixel one inch type sensor. And when compared to a full frame sensor, this is what it looks like. And the M50 is a crop frame camera or APS-C. And this is what its sensor looks like size wise when compared to the G7X Mark II and a full frame sensor. So the Canon M50 has a larger sensor. But what does that mean exactly? Well, generally a larger surface area on your sensor means better quality and better low light capabilities at higher ISOs. And while we're talking about ISO, this would be a good point to mention that the Canon M50 has a max ISO range of 25,600, expandable up to 51,200, while the G7X Mark II has a max ISO range of 12,800, again expandable up to 25,600. The M50 has Canon's latest processor, the Digic 8, versus the G7X Mark II's slightly older Digic 7 processor. And a nice little fact here is that the G7X Mark II was the first camera to be launched with the Digic 7, while the M50 was the first camera to launch with the Digic 8 processor. So what does that mean exactly? Well, the difference between the two are primarily the processing of 4K video, faster continuous shooting, and better handling of noise in low light conditions with the Digic 8 processor in the Canon M50. In terms of lenses, the G7X Mark II is a compact camera. So it has a built-in retracting lens, which is 24 millimeters, with a 4.2 times optical zoom, taking it up to 100 millimeters. And it has f-stop values of 1.8 to 2.8. Now the Canon M50 is a mirrorless interchangeable lens camera with the M mount. And the lens that comes with the M50 is the 15 to 45 millimeter f-stop 3.5 to 6.3 kit lens. However, with an adapter, you can also use your EF mount lenses, opening this camera up to a whole new dimension of videography and photography. When it comes to vlogging, there are a few necessities that a camera is required to have. And one of these is a flip out screen. And as you would expect, both of these cameras have this as an option, albeit with a different take. First up the G7X Mark II and here we can see that the screen is actually a tilt out screen which sits on top of the camera. Now this design is very useful, it's easy to hold and convenient for vlogging and for flipping over for storage when not in use. However there are a couple of caveats here that I have to mention and a big one is the way that the screen has been attached to the body. There are actually only two small screws attaching this screen to the camera body. And after continuous use, they start to become loose and the screen starts to feel insecure. It moves, it starts to wobble. I actually had to go out and buy some thread glue, which actually has helped to secure the screen for more than a year now with no problems. Additionally, the G7X Mark II screen doesn't have any protection as it's not a fully articulating screen. So the screen itself is susceptible to scratches and chips. Now in contrast to the G7X, the M50 screen itself feels robust and secure when moving around. The Canon M50 screen is fully articulating and it has a hard protective piece of plastic on the outside, which means you can turn the screen around, keep it protected while traveling. And if that's the case, you can also use the EVF and take pictures from there. Yes, the M50 does have an electronic viewfinder, something that the G7X Mark II is lacking. Something that both of these cameras have, which is a great feature, is the tap focus capabilities. So you can tap your face on the screen and get good focus while you're out and about vlogging. 
I have found that the M50 is much quicker to respond and more reliable in this area than the G7X Mark II, and that's probably down to the newer Digic 8 processor. When it comes to microphone options, the M50 does have a mic input, making it very attractive for vloggers using external mounted microphones. Although the design is a bit clumsy as the mic input interferes with the articulating screen. And the G7X Mark II is a little bit of a letdown in this area as it doesn't include that functionality. Although the newly released G7X Mark III does have this included, but for the Mark II, you have to rely on the onboard camera sound which sounds a little bit something like this. So today we have the opportunity to use this, the Canon C300 Mark One. Today we're in Gozo, we've just taken the boat over from Malta. Welcome to Kai Creative, oh, and no. a special video today. <laughs> I'm trying to open the door for my friends. <laughs> today we're doing a wedding video of Jay's wedding. That's me. A big selling point of any vlogging camera is going to be the stabilization, especially as a lot of your shots are going to be handheld, and both the M50 and the G7X Mark II have a form of image stabilization. The Canon M50 has digital IS, which introduces a crop for video, but the kit lens also has image stabilization, helping you to stabilize your shots. In comparison, the G7X Mark II uses optical image stabilization. Another massive selling point of any vlogging camera, of course, is going to be the video options. And starting off with the G7X Mark II, if we change the video system to NTSC, we are presented with movie filming options of 24, 30 and 60 frames per second in HD, that's 1920 by 1080. While on the other hand, with the Canon M50, we are not only presented with exactly the same HD frame rates, but also the option to film in 24 frames per second in 4K and 25 frames per second in 4K when using the PAL video system. In addition to this, the M50 also has an option to film slow motion at 120 frames per second, but only at 720p. In addition to this, both of these cameras have time-lapse capability, producing some pretty decent time-lapse pieces for your vlog B-roll. Another great feature of both of these cameras is the ability to use Wi-Fi to transfer photos and videos over to your phone. So if you wanted to edit on the go or you simply wanted to upload photos to social media, all you have to do is tap the button on the right hand side of both of these cameras to connect them to your phone via Wi-Fi. Jumping into some notable mentions for the Canon M50 in particular have to be the fast continuous shooting rate of 10 frames per second compared to 8 frames per second for the G7X Mark II, the option to shoot in C-RAW which is a compressed version of RAW, and as mentioned earlier because it's an interchangeable lens camera you can purchase an adapter like the Viltrox EF to EOS M2 and then you can use your older EF mount lenses. I've actually been playing around with the 24 to 105 Canon L lens and some of the shots that I've taken with it are actually pretty nice. Although the G7X Mark II is quite old and appears to be lagging seriously behind the Canon M50, one of its massive advantages is its size and portability. Having that retracting lens means that I've been able to literally have this thing strapped to the side of my belt for the last few years as my vlogging and behind the scenes camera. It's extremely convenient to carry around it's easy to use with one hand for vlogging and also great to take a quick picture for social media stories. The Canon M50, although small, still can't fit in this compact side pouch with its kit lens, meaning that it requires a bigger bag or fiddling around with lenses and that makes it a lot less convenient to carry around and use than the G7X Mark II. Another nice little gem on the G7X Mark II is the built-in ND filter allowing you the ability to film in sunny conditions with larger apertures for blurrier backgrounds. So how much should you be looking to spend on one of these cameras? Well, with the release of the G7X Mark III, the Mark II has actually come down in price quite considerably. Now, I've actually heard some pretty unsavory things about the Mark III, while many online users and Amazon reviewers still highly esteem and praise the Mark II, but I guess that's a discussion for another video. For a second-hand Mark II, they are currently selling on eBay for about 250 to 350 pounds in the UK, anywhere between 300 and 450 dollars in the US. Again, this is very dependent on the condition of the camera and accessories that might come with it. The Canon M50 will cost you 649 pounds 99 pence, brand new, with the kit lens from the official UK Canon store. 
and $629.99 from the official USA Canon store, but you only get the body, you don't get the lens. I'm not sure why they do that. You can purchase one second hand on eBay for about 400 to 500 pounds, around 450 to 550 dollars with the kit lens. But remember that if you want the EF to EFM mount adapter, this particular Viltrox model will cost you an extra 120 pounds or 150 dollars. So who would consider buying which one of these cameras? Does that make sense? Who would consider buying which one of these cameras? One of these cameras. Well, if you're just starting out with vlogging, maybe you want to make quick daily vlogs. They don't necessarily have to be amazing cinematic pieces. Then consider getting yourself a G7X Mark II. It's only really for vlogging things that you want to film and edit quickly and get up online. It does work well as a behind the scenes camera for all your projects and it takes nice pictures for social media, particularly Instagram. But for those of you who are looking to push your creative aspirations and go beyond vlogging, perhaps photography, videography, filmmaking, then the Canon M50 is definitely a camera you should consider getting. The adapter really does help to unlock the camera to some pretty awesome lenses, and that 4K filming option is also going to help a little in the future for possible projects. Now, we've already done individual review videos of both the Canon G7X Mark II and the Canon M50, so if you are considering getting one of these cameras, do also consider checking out those videos. And I'll put some links for those down in the description below. So what are your thoughts on these two cameras? Are you considering getting one or are you gonna get something completely different? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already guys, do consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and hitting that bell button for notifications. But in the meantime, stay creative, imagine, implement and inspire, and I'll catch you next time on Kai Creative.